The arrival of summer brings the annual stop to South Haven, Michigan on the Gridlife calendar to a track called Gingerman Raceway. This weekend marks a decade for the Midwest Festival, and in front of a sold-out crowd, we will go racing again. For five of those ten years, Gridlife Touring Cup has put on some of the best grassroots racing on display for people trackside and around the world. These drivers are not professionals. They race for the love of the sport. And though it's not the world center of racing, this is our Daytona, and this is the center of our world. Hi, everybody. I'm Kyle Heyer, joined by Cerise from FC Piero. Cerise, thanks so much for joining me today. Grid Life Touring Cup, our wheel-to-wheel single-class sprint racing series on the biggest stage in grassroots racing, the 10th annual Grid Life Midwest Festival. Sold-out crowd and a sold-out field, 50-plus cars racing for about 15 minutes coming up here in a second. It is honestly a big deal. And as I was mentioning before we were talking, the the lineup, and we'll, we'll get some hot drone footage soon, but just the lineup of cars is, it's long, dude. It's going to take a while just for them to leave the line. Uh, but it is so cool to see these guys and gals out here. Look at them all lining up. I mean, the cars are so pretty, man. And uh, here we go. We have people lining up. They're coming down onto pit lane here. We got people still getting in their suits. Look at the camping. Kyle, it is just, honestly... That's a packed freaking house, man. It is a totally packed house. And again, a sold-out campground and a sold-out general admission audience here this weekend. Sold-out race field. But, of course, our coverage this weekend is powered by Hyundai N. Hyundai N, never just drive. And Falcon, the official tire of Grid Life Track Battle. Without them, we could not be here. We could not do this without them. But look at all the people that have made this event possible. Mm -hmm. Cerise, this is... Grassroots racing, but I said they're not professionals, and they are not. They don't make their living going racing, mm -hmm. but th they are in the center of this stage, and they are about to put on a show. And if this is grassroots racing and they are not professionals, this is the closest they're going to get. This Absolutely. is just unbelievable. I love these shots. It is. It, <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> it's like an I spy. Okay, ready? I spy with my <laughs> little eye. Um, no, but so it, it is true. I mean, like, the passion and the amount of just time and attention that goes into every single one of these uh, race teams in the programs is is – high caliber so yeah professional is a little bit subjective here but we know that these guys and gals are really serious about their craft and their and their sport so we are uh we're getting ready to see some more action and this is going to be a good one we had qualifying and we had some uh some interesting uh i would say battles if you will but people coming around and really fighting for their position yeah it, and it's certainly we're gonna get into the starting lineup here in a couple of minutes they're gonna leave pit road at around four o'clock here and of course we got tons of aerial coverage here this weekend from the the stream here the specialty uh specialty field production stream team and this weekend of course we've got hyundai n powering our live stream but this weekend in particular we have the hyundai ionic 5 sky cam with us cerise so we're gonna yes. see some of that uh so we'll get some aerial views like we were a minute ago uh just some awesome aerial coverage provided by uh hyundai and ionic 5 and there is a shot from our hyundai ionic Ionic 5 Skycam, high above the uh, Gingerman Raceway racetrack. There are the uh, labels going up, the uh, the banners going up on the the uh, stage there at the really st uh, the central oh, of the festival ground. That whole area is going to look nothing like that once all the bodies are packed in, the sun goes down, and the party starts. I mean, it is like it, that small space when you're in that environment. It looks huge, and it's so much fun. So that's what we're really excited for here at Gingerman Raceway. We have one of the biggest, the biggest festival of the year. Um, one of my favorite events, absolutely hands down. Um, so yeah, we're really stoked to, to see what this event turns into. It's sold out. You know, last year we sold out Saturday. This time we sold out Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, uh, just checking out the, the campgrounds here, it makes sense. It, and it's still filling in. Not everyone is even here yet, and that just goes to show you the scale. So Look at all the way back there. Yeah, you still see some. Uh, that, that, that's, that's, the, that that's the driver load, and the yeah. other gate is, is you can <gasps> see oh, the you can line. see it right there, upper right-hand corner. You can oh, see yeah. them just about to leave the frame. I incredible. People it, are still it, sitting in their cars. It, it's amazing. And, again, big thanks to Hyundai and Ionic 5 for providing the Skycam aerial coverage here this weekend. We'll talk more about them later. But cars getting gridded here, Cerise. We had qualifying earlier today. We had a, a timing issue. So let's just update you real quick on the the in, the, the start of the field. is going to be Paul Curley, Jeremy Swenson, Luke McGrew, and Matan Rosenberg. So the two cars we thought were leading are actually third and fourth. Okay. So Paul Curley, Jeremy Swenson, two of the top five in the point standings, will be on your provisional, mm -hmm. uh, or I guess you should say your pole at the front row. Uh, we have 50 cars lined up Sheesh. from qualifying for this race. That is 25 rows. We're going to get two pace laps, and then we're going to race for 12 to 15 minutes. Now, I say 12 to 15. It's not a set distance, 
Race control is going to decide, yeah, this is, we've had a good race. We'll throw the white flag now. And then that will be the conclusion of the race. That yeah. gives us a little bit more flexibility as well. In uh, If the race is uh, is not going to get close, so we might as well save some track time. And But when like if, it's, if it's going to get really spicy, let's let it play out a little bit more. So I love the flexibility here in the series to do that. Again, power to weight, 12 and a half horsepower, uh, tw uh, 12 and a half pounds per horsepower in this series. And what that means is you've got wildly different builds, Corvettes mm -hmm. versus S2000s Balance versus power Miatas. Going on. Uh, and you just get a lot of creative engineering. You get a lot of creative driving. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. Everybody has, like, last, you know, even just talking about drifting, I know we're talking about GLTC now, but just the fun little ways that they keep their bumpers on. And as I was mentioning, yeah, you have some options, but everyone's going to do it their way. This is, in, in its own element, there is engineering, but it's art. It's like the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain are having a baby, and we're about to go watch it go on track. I can't wait. And, again, when we go off into turn number one, we would kick this race off. This is a 11-turn, uh, 2.2-mile track. Let's get a look at our Hyundai N track preview while we're at it before we get pacing here. Uh, we'll get a look at this 2.2-mile track. Uh, 11 turns, and it all really starts with this run down towards turn number one. Front straightaway, bottom left of your screen. We're heading away from the camera shot here. Into turn number one, it's a fast left-hander, down to third gear, maybe second in gear cars with taller gears. Then into turn number two, double apex, right-hand corner. You accelerate out towards turn number three, kind of the hammerhead here uh, at the uh, apex of turn three. That apex is very, very late. Then a sprint through the flat out turn four into turn five. It's the left hand corner that will bring you into turn number six. You have to kind of uh, wash out a little bit, tuck it in tight for turn six. Then seven, eight, nine, you're balancing on the edge of the racetrack, right out to the edge of the grass race, and it's all handling back through seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and as we mentioned before, you're going to have a bit of a different track setup now. now. Now that we have some rubber on the track, these you know these people, they, they went out, they got their qualifying lap, but there will have to be some slight adjustments just based upon the conditions of the asphalt. Yeah, the grip level will continue to go down throughout the weekend mm -hmm. with all the action. The track is going to get all the rubber, the debris, the dirt that's going to get laid down. Just the nature of the beast of having all these cars on track. But as of course, when the sun goes down tonight, we will stop racing and we will adorn the festival site. You can see at the bottom of the screen there, there's where the festival will be at the Ooh. outside of turn number two all jamming to the sounds of some of the great EDM artists around the country. So that's a look at our Hyundai N track preview here at Gingerman Raceway, and engines are about to fire here, Cerise, and we're about to go for two pace laps. We'll read you your 50-car grid, but before we do that, let's also catch you up on where the point situations are coming into this weekend. Jeremy Swenson leads the points uh, by 10 over James Houghton. Then it's Luke McGrew, Matt Waldbaum, Paul Curley, your top five. Eric Cattill, who missed a round, is sixth. Then it's Matan Rosenberg, Ronnie Vidoc, Joel Morrison, and Gary Wimble, your top 10. Ryan Power is 11th in the standings. Currently, uh, with 18 season points, 77 total points, he ran all those races in a BMW M3 borrowed from Birmingham Road and Race, which is Andrew Raines' team. They've got a new sponsor this weekend we'll talk about in a little bit. Ryan Power is now in a different car, an ND MX-5. It's a 2019 model year, going from a big BMW to a very small, lightweight uh, Mazda MX-5. Very different experience. We'll see if he can continue to run as well as he has. As far as qualifying goes, uh, I, I saw him uh, on the list, but not as far up as I thought we would see him. So he's got some work to do, I think, in this race. Yeah, and how many, uh, do you recall how many uh, sessions he's t taken out with a new car? Not a lot. Uh, he is uh, 26, so he really... I think as far as I knew, it was still kind of in progress uh, uh -huh. up until this event. So yep. uh, 26 place, it's going to kind of right in the meat of the field there. Jackson Jensen is also back there pretty far. should also point out Salil Shukla in the number 410. That is a red S2000. He's joined us again for, I think, his second time. And uh, also one of our Time Attack competitors, longtime Time Attack competitors, Alex Moss, is going to be in a silver S2000 as well. He will be sharing that car with Andy Smedegard, mm. but I do believe that it's Alex for races 1, 2, and 4 this weekend. You got to love those S2000s. 2000s, man, because they do. Yeah, they certainly do. There's <laughs> Lena Chin, by the way, one of the women in the field here this weekend, the light yeah. blue car. Uh, the 21 of Sean Krebsbach, that's a new entry. It, it was very competitive in practice. Didn't qualify quite as well as perhaps we were expecting. Uh, he ended up P25 after qualifying, so he was fourth in practice, P25 in qualifying. And Carlos Mendez in the number 14. I was a little surprised to see him down in 35th. I don't know if this is his first time here, but he ran as high as uh, sixth at Watkins Glen a couple of weeks ago. He's relatively new to GLTC. His first event was at Carolina Motorsports Park, so he's going to get the baptism of a lifetime <laughs> uh, here in the first couple laps at Gingerman Raceway. It's going to be wild. You know, just throw him in. What's the best way to swim? Just go in the water, you <laughs> yeah, know? I guess so. That's what he's doing. And that's the thing. With this sport, it's like, you, you know, if you have like a play basketball, you go find a court, you know, you practice something new. No, you have like a few and far between opportunities. If you change your car, if you change your setup, you got to come out here and you just got to 
You just got to figure it out as you go. One of my favorite comparisons when we talk about different sports, and, and I, I had this opportunity when I went to the Indy 500 last week to really put this in perspective, is that most other sports, you're playing against one other team. When you come to a racetrack, you're racing against 49 other teams. Everyone has a mission. But here in GLTC, we all try to run this like a team sport. Yep. Because everyone's trying to load their car up on the trailer at the end of the weekend. So, yes, you're competing against 49 other competitors. But uh, in the words of Daryl Waltrip, I would call this a little bit of coopetition. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> your, your goal is to beat the other guy. Yes. But you don't want to beat him by putting him in the wall or getting into his door. Yes. We race clean here. That is our goal and attempt. We don't put the incidents on the highlight reels because those are not our highlights. Those mm -hmm. are our lowlights. We want to have good, fair, clean racing up front. This is a challenging track to do that. We're putting 50 cars on a very small track, very narrow racetrack, a, a track everyone's comfortable with so maintaining that expectation is a challenge here but if there's any field in north america or the world that can do it it's these guys and the incident rate again uh we love to talk about it uh, we, again we, we wish it could be better sometimes mm -hmm. but it is really really good so we're going to try to keep it that way yep. M mike cone is behind the wheel of our hyundai n uh, pace car here that is i believe the one that they loaned us for the year to do our track previews in you'll <laughs> see that video tomorrow i got to drive on track the other day for the first time in a while here at ginger you look so happy about that it was fun <laughs> it's a fun i don't get to drive that so, dude, honestly, so the views also, like, the, the fact that elevation changes are great when you're driving. It gives you that, like, nice whoosh feeling. But, like, when you're out here, you have great visibility. This is actually a relatively fat, flat track. So when you're out here, it's either you can see where you're about to be or you can see where the other drivers are. And I think yep. it just adds that, like, level of dynamicism. And um, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And this racetrack, I've heard uh, Greg Kramer talked about it uh, after he talked to Tom O'Gorman about how this track is relatively flat. It doesn't have a lot of elevation. What it does have a lot of is texture. Uh, mm. it, it does change over the course of the lap, but not all at once, oh, just a little go. bit. But here is Sophie. She's going to be our splitter. Send them out, girl. And she's going to split the field. Paul Curley chooses drivers left, and everyone else is going to get sent. Look at the sent. professionalism. I That's love a great this. workout, honestly. It is a great Check workout. Out. James Houghton, Matt Walbaum. Let's roll through our starting lineup here to kick things off for race number one. It's a long grid, so we're going to do the highlights here. Let's do it. Row number one is Paul Curley, the number 45, alongside Jeremy Swenson, the points leader in the number three. Row two, Luke McGrew's got two race wins most recently at Watkins Glen. He starts third alongside Matan Rosenberg, turning 19 in a couple of weeks. Not sure how many months that is, but it's uh, not a lot of months. <laughs> uh, James Houghton rolls off in row number three. He recently won two races at Watkins Glen. So did Matt Walbaum. He won race three at WGI a couple of weeks ago. Eric Cattell still hunting for his first win in his EG four door, but of course his season has been tumultuous. That car was upside down in a ditch. It's P7 for We're the start of this We're not over it. We're not over it. There he is in the hybrid racing EG. Eighth place, we'll start alongside him. Eric Jensen, a really strong qualifying effort for that LS swap Scion FRS. Then it's Gary Wimble, Austin Hurdle rounding out the top 10. Andrew Raines, the Birmingham Road and race car. Uh, he will roll off 11th alongside Eric Meadows in a relatively new Corvette build. He will be 12th. Ronnie Vidoc, 13th place alongside Aramis Carosis. Joel Morrison, Zach Lavoy start 15th and 16th. It's Tony Marchev and Jason Saney, 17th and 18th. And row number 10 is Colton Wade from Fields Auto Works and Eddie Nicato in his second GLTC weekend. Julio Crispin, Adam Ulrich start 21st and 22nd. Ryan Upham returns to competition alongside Lena Chin in row number 12. Sean Krebs back in his first wheel to wheel weekend in his Evo starts 25th. Ryan Power in that purple ND Miata starts 26th. Then it's Samiria drivers, Hans Horpadal in the 77, Jake Jornside in the 132. They start 27th and 28th. Sam Scott, Justin Lee start 29th and 30th. Then Jackson, Maverick Jensen, and Zillow Shukla start in 31st and 32nd. Row 17, Fiona Liu re rebounds after a crash at Watkins Glen in the 333. And Robert Vierhoot in the number 95 starts 34th. Carlos Mendez back with us again for the third time this season alongside Louis Chatroop in 36th. Alex Moss back with us once more in GLTC in 37th. And Ben Morosky in the number 81 Marowski. starts. Okay, it's close enough. I, I'm doing it for you, Ben. Ben Borowski. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Make sure you don't spin this time, Ben. And then 39th place, West Case in the 767. Bob Dice starts 40th. Seth Gale, Adam Wood start in row number 21. Thomas Moss, Chandler Rowe start in row number 22. Vitas Aronowskis, Michael, or excuse me, Tyler Starr in the 36. Then it's Di Wynn, Richard Sawicki, David Rudzinski, and Nathan Manning rounding out your 50-car grid. That was a lot.
It's a lot. We still Listen, have a pace lap to go, too. We, Look at we, me go. Not only that, but so we're only on our pace lap here. We have these cars. And you're going to give each other space. You know, you're going to see them go side to side. They're warming up their tires. They're trying to get that even heat all throughout uh, the surface of the tire here. Um, but we are covering almost half the track with this fleet of cars here. Um, so I think that, that, that if that doesn't tell you about how large this, this race is going to be, um, that, that says something. So, I mean, like, even if you're mid-pack, you know, you're... There's some high numbers. Yeah, a lot of times drivers have to reset their expectations when they come to Midwest sure. because yep. a top 20 here is a top five in any other series in yes. North America. It's it, all relative. It is all relative. It's yeah. very, very hard. I wanted to mention real quick Andrew Reigns in the number 98. He is rolling off in 11th place. It's that white BMW at the back of this shot here. They got a new sponsor he here this week, uh, Tolos. It's a website where you can uh, rent trailers uh, and for racers to rent out their trailers. <gasps> Which, that is sick. Which, oh, my God, that that's genius? sick. No, that's absolutely genius. Oh, they, my God, that's great. It, it's really cool. They've got uh, the owner of the company here this weekend. He was actually at the driver's meeting as well. Really cool. Thanks to them for, for jumping on board with Andrew Reigns and uh, supporting grassroots racing. Dude, I honestly, so I had no idea that Kyle was even going to do that plug. That's a real reaction. That is sick. So, like, I, 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 don't, I don't have my own trailer. Yeah, how, like, how? I don't have I don't have storage for it, and right. they're expensive. So like you know, if you want to get out there and you got to bring your your car to the track, yeah, you could street drive it. Oh, it's like super baller, you know, you street drive it. like that's fine. But you don't want that liability. Like you really don't. I think in the back of your mind, everybody wants to have that peace of mind of knowing that they're going to be able to, you know, go out there. Do you know if they rent the trucks too? I don't know, but I I, I just know. Well, that you guys can look them up and, and yeah, see, see what Tolos. they're about. I'm going to look them up. T O W L O S. T O W, L O S. Yep. Tolos. Yes. Love it. Yeah, it's, it's really neat. Again, we were, I was having this conversation the other day. Like, if, if you live in a place where it's hard to have a trailer mm -hmm. with you, uh, the only option is really like a place like U-Haul or something. So yeah, to right. have an option like that's really cool. But we are getting set to go racing here in a couple of minutes, Cerise. Once this green flag drops, it's going to get really hectic. Let's do it. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Thanks so much, everyone. In front of a sold-out crowd, we're going to go Grid Life Touring Cup racing for the fifth time at a Grid Life Midwest Festival. And every year, the action gets more and more intense. It is two rows of Corvettes that are lined up up front and then a whole bunch of everybody else My in tow. God, it's like confetti. And listen, I'm not trying to pick favorites, but like with if you're a driver out here and you want airtime, make it a bright car. <laughs> I just love seeing all the colors out here. It's so much fun. Just the, the, the sprinkles of personality coming around these cars. You can get a little feel of what these people are like, how rowdy they are, how refined they are. Um, it's just it's so much fun. And then you got a tractor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the 10th Grid Life Midwest Festival Ooh. behind the Hyundai Elantra N pace car. Can you feel the pressure Attention building? Is Jeremy Swenson is the points leader, but he will start second to Paul Curley here. The cars will roll out of turn number 11. They're going to be bunched up here, waiting for the green to get as many cars as they can on the front straightaway. For the 10th time, we go to Grid Life Midwest Festival for the fifth time with Grid Life Touring Cup. Thanks so much for joining us here, the first of four incredible races. We are racing at Grid Life Midwest. Green flag flies for the fifth time for GLTC at Midwest Festival into turn number one. Here we go, side by side through the first corner. Curly leads the way, Swenson into second, then Rosenberg. There's Waldbaum, but side by side with is that Luke McGrew in behind here. Through turn number two, now everybody clean through one and two, Cerise. What a great drive. I'm sitting here. I'm doing this job with you. I'm just listening to you commentate. I'm just enjoying it right now. Too no, wide. Is, look oh. at that. Oh, the tension, the energy out there has to be, you could cut it with a knife. Dude. Joel Morrison's got a bumper dangling. He had that problem at Circuit of the Americas, but up front, nobody's got anything for Curly and Swenson. They put some distance on in the first half lap. I'm hoping that he just doesn't pull a yellow flag out later. But listen, we want a clean, good, Safe race out here, but let's go. Let's get this energy up. Side by side through five and six. Austin Hurdle on the outside of Gary Wimble. That's through a very tight section. Look at James Houghton now pulling up alongside Wallbaum into turn seven. Now they're going to track out. Eric Jensen slots in there. He was going for a spot down into seven. Now track out to the edge of the road here. Cerise, and look at Cattill in this battle as well. Yep, you want to use as much or as little of the track that makes sense for your car. And everybody's going to take it a little bit of a different line. You want to hit that apex, but, you know, everyone's going to do this a little bit differently. Here they go down into 10B now at Houghton hounding the back of Matt Walbaum. They fought for victory at Watkins Glen. Houghton beat Walbaum twice. Walbaum beat Houghton once. Yep. And it's a rematch here today. And look at Eric Cattill throttling back up to chase in his hybrid racing EG Civic. These are three names that we have heard a lot from this year. And that is wonderful. I mean, we really are. We're rooting for these people just as much as you are. So uh, we'd love to see them succeed. Here we go. Okay, tuned, coming in hot. Oh, is he gonna, oh, okay. All right, all right. Breaking into turn number 11. Houghton on the inside, Walbaum on the outside. They're still right side out. by side. And now, Cerise, it's a left-hander into turn one. Here we go. Cattill follows in line. He's made it up to position number seven on the opening lap here through the first corner. 
Curley's not driven away. Ro Matan Rosenberg in that 484, one of the heaviest cars in the field, clinging to third. But Houghton, Waldbaum, and Eric Cotill, this is a uh, Honda K engine pack here. But here comes Eric now with a good run on Waldbaum into turn three. So where do you think the best passing zones are going to be on this track? What turns? Uh, turn one's a great opportunity, but the one you have to circle is turn number 11. It's after the longest straightaway. Okay. You can use the slipstream. You can use the advantage of your straight line speed if you've got a V8 or a V6 under the hood. Mm -hmm. It's a heavy braking zone. Anywhere where you're braking a lot, that's where you can make an overtake the easiest here. But Katil wasn't able to do it on Walpom. One of the determining factors there, Eric has no ABS in that car, so oh. he doesn't have any lock brakes to lean on. Okay, all right. So there's a little bit of context for you, a little bit of context for me. And here we go, because you know, we, we love seeing the cars drive, but we love that passing moment, so. Yeah. And now they get single filed out here. They're gonna start calculating their risk. Austin Hurdle lost a spot there to Gary Wimble. He is on a move up in that number one car. He had a tumultuous 2022, uh, crashed his MX-5 Miata at Circuit of the Americas, rebuilt that car, had another accident at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, rebuilt it to run this season. He's been back right in the mix and in the top 10 in the point standings, and now all over the back of Eric Jensen, and for the lead, the two G-Speed vets out up front, leading the way. Dude, they look so hot. Those cars are just, like, again, I'm not picking favorites, bro. I keep picking favorites, man. They're, they're putting a pretty fervent pace out there, but one of the things that we typically uh, see is over the course of the yeah. race, we're gonna see them kind of fall back into mm -hmm. the pack here a little bit. Well, this track is not necessarily set up for them, as you were mentioning before. So, yes, they're a very proficient car, but this might not be their bread and butter. And you know what, that's what's gonna, the proof is gonna be in the pudding here. Yeah, Jason Saney in the Porsche Cayman's creeping into the shot here as well, right behind, uh, I think that's uh, Eric Meadows, by the way. That's a relatively new build. Uh, brought it to Watkins Glen just in time to make a couple of races, but not really tested all the way to the limit. So he's getting his baptism here as well. And there's one of the BMWs that's lingering just at the back of that shot. Is that a Remus Corosis? Yes, it is. The 871 BMW in that shot all the way up into 13th place. A good drive here as we go back to the battle for P6. And into turn five now, Waldbaum looking a little bit off his game here in the early moments of this one. We typically see Matt kind of excel later in the weekend. Uh, he's won, I think, uh, uh, three or four races by this point in his career, and only one of them was not an invert race. That was the one at Watkins Glen last time. So he's never won in the first half of the weekend before. Uh, so he so works he works well under pressure. Definitely maybe, maybe works well. Maybe that's what he needs. He's just waiting for that pressure to build a little bit, and then maybe, you know he might come back out and be that wall bone that we know and we love. And look at this, Die Win up underneath Seth Gale in the 541 at turn number six. This Triple Eight was another car. It was awesome perspective, but this is another car that was in the wall at Watkins Glen, rebuilt yeah. in only a couple of weeks to be back racing here. That was a treacherous race, and if you guys haven't had the chance yet, you can go back and watch the live stream. Um, really interesting race setup with the completely wet conditions. Now you're out here, it's not only is it dry, it's hot, dude. It's hot and it's slick, and it's only gonna get worse throughout the weekend yep. with all the the debris that we're going to see on the racetrack as well. The front five have started to stretch a little bit, but I'm watching this battle with Eric Jensen, that black FRS and the red and silver Corvette. That is kind of a cordoning back together and into turn number 11, Tony Marchev and Joel Morrison side by side. And Zach Lavoie throw that in there, Lena, Lena Chin, yep. Eddie Nakato, Adam Ulrich, and there's a bit of a stack up there, the 21 at Krebsbach, right in the middle of everything. People are looking at this, assessing their situation. Where's their window of opportunity? Tony Marchev's got a little damage on the right rear Defender of that S2000, okay. and look at Zach Lavoie trying to find a way around. <laughs> Zach Lavoie, he he won Driver of the Year uh, last year for Grid Life. He is one of these people that just embodies everything characteristically that we want to see in a driver uh, out here. Just the generosity and the sportsmanship. Um, so shout out to you, Zach. I'm just you're you're killing it right now, but like you're a great guy. So. Zach's one of the best people in the paddock yeah. to talk to. Always willing to give you a big old hug. Oh, for sure. And uh, always races fair as well. These three S2000s all very different in construction. Uh, but all racing together here just outside of the top 10. Yep. Marchev, another really impressive drive for him. Eric Cotill slipping back into the, the cl clutches of uh, Eric Jensen for eighth place. So that's a, a bit of a climb there for the 184. Look a little bit deeper in the field. Ryan up him in the mix. Colton Wade, uh, Eddie Nakato, and then, of course, Krebsbach in that number 21, who's only up one spot from where he started. Those red headlights are mean looking. Yeah, was that, was that West Case, perhaps, in the, the silver M3? Uh, we're looking right here, right oh, in front of us. Oh, uh, at the FRS of Jensen. Just, you know, I mean, it looks mean, and I think that's, I think there's something to be said about that, that you got style points, and then you got, like, you know, intimidation points. Some of the best liveries in North American road racing, I think, are here. Look at Jensen going defensive now on Gary Wimble. Cattell had fallen back to Jensen. Now he stretches the gap in the handling section, but watch Wimble on the brakes. Coming really in, late on the brakes. Wow, and Jensen shuts the door, says no thanks. And Paul Curley 
continues to have the fastest lap of the race, but Swenson just did a personal best. He's half a second back here. Half a second counts, though. You're looking at 0.5 on the, you know, numerically, but a lot goes into that. It's only a couple car lengths, though, so it could go away pretty quick. Yep. But Cattill holding up the train here a little bit through turn number two. Jensen, Wimble, and Austin Hurdle, who had quite the tumultuous week, he had a, some uh, ring gear bolts come out, and he discovered that right before he loaded the car up. Managed to find some, but then he needed a, a sway bar mount that he managed to get just before practice yesterday. Running top 10 right now, it's paying off for him. And Cattill now under fire from Jensen. Does he have a problem, maybe? He's real slow, leaving turn number three. But Jensen on the outside here into turn five. White wheel the world, man. <laughs> White wheel yeah. the world. He wasn't sure about that combination. He had black uh, black arrow discs on before Watkins Glen, but changed, or before the accident, I should say, but yeah. put the white on his. Yeah, let it pop. Yeah, now Wimble tucks underneath at turn number seven. So I think Cattill is not liking something in that car. I'm not sure if it's overheating or having some kind of problem, but we've typically not seen him go backwards like this. Well, he hasn't shaken the car down in this, these conditions yet, has he? Or was he? He was, he, he was in practice uh, yesterday as well, so he should be fine, but. Again, who knows? This is the first time this car has been at this racetrack, with the exception of when yeah. he tested last year. Yep. And now you're looking at duration too. So yeah, you might, have, you know, he's got the shakedown, but you know, we're, we're doing lap after lap out here. You know. Here comes Austin Hurdle to the inside on the blind crest out of 10B, and right behind, that's the Tolos car, the uh, Birmingham Road and Race 98, with Andrew Rains behind the wheel. He's going to get by Cattill as well into turn number 11. Yep. And Eric now has Eric Meadows creeping up behind him, Aramis Carosis and Ronnie Vidoc right you, behind at 14. You can just taste the difference in the, 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 the level of passion during this race versus qualifying. I mean, you can tell that they mean business. Uh, they, everybody wants to win this event. I mean, if you were to come to Gingerman and you were to win this, uh, you know, this, this series of it, that, that's a big deal. I said this is our Daytona. If, it, you, it, if it there's is, any yeah. trophy that you want to hold, it's this one. Absolutely, yep. Out of turn four now, only a couple minutes remaining here in this race, so we are expecting a white flag either this time or next. We'll keep our eyes on that but the lead has come down a little bit. It was half a second, then up to eight tenths of a second, but for third place, Rosenberg now feeling the pressure from Luke McGrew in the number seven. It, it, oh, this is real dicey here. Eric Cattill getting passed by Eric Meadows, and here comes Ronnie Vidoc and Remus Carosis. Vidoc got by Carosis in the first half of the lap. Now they're door to door through turn number six. This is uh, this is tight, and I, he's not going the right direction. No, thank God for drones. Here we go, here we go. All right. Through, through turn number seven now, and Cattill slipping backwards outside of the top ten now. The hybrid racing EG not going the right direction here as others hound him down from behind. West Case, by the way, also has red headlights. He is in this field. I, I just saw him pass on through. Yep, and you can see now, as you were saying, they're starting to get a little bit of distance between them. There's a bit more of a spread. It really does kind of separate the group um, as far as either skill level or performance. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're, we're, 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 we're thinning it out, kind of, you know? Yeah, and again, throughout the weekend, the qualifying is a pretty good indicator of, of the pace of your car, but it's going to shift and shuffle as conditions change. Yep. This battle's been amazing. Austin yeah, Hurdle, Gary Wimble, it. and Eric Jensen, they've just been on it the entire time. Jensen's been playing defense, but now got some offense. He has not really had a great season in that 184. Yeah. He's been up in the front in the past, but this year something just hasn't clicked. He's had broken differentials and transmissions and all sorts of things. ABS wasn't working right at Circuit of the Americas, yeah. but a top 10 would mean a lot for Eric Jensen to get that train uh, in the right direction and the ship righted here. I think a lot of these grassroots drivers too, the one, you know, the folks at home that just go to track days, they get that. You just kind of hit this wave of misfortune. And it is an unfortunate place to be, but when the passion is there and you love the sport, you're going to keep pushing through. And eventually, you're going to get out here and you're going to be in this really sick battle, uh, either with some of your friends or your best competitors. Paul Curley out front has just been undeniable so far. Remember last year at Midwest Festival, he was battling Tom O'Gorman, who went on to win the championship and not by a small margin. Oh, yeah. But Paul Curley was able to hold off Tom here last year in an epic battle and he's doing the same right now to Jeremy Swenson he's just been perfect so far hasn't put a wheel wrong I think there's some lap traffic on the horizon though that can always bring some chaos into the mix here but Swenson's not out of the mix just yet three car lengths back here and for third even closer I just really want some curly fries now <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry off the back straight away so is Luke McGrew hey let's go all right he's coming in hot he wants it down the back straightaway here, and look at Rosenberg's car, the heaviest and most powerful car in the field, so it's gonna gain on the straights, but look at the braking zone, how much Luke makes up here as the four Corvette Quartet leads the way here onto the front straightaway. Just imagine having that in your rear view, you know? It's aggressive, and we it, like it, and we're here for it. It's awesome stuff. Now down into turn number one, 
Lap traffic on the horizon. The lead battle isn't getting a whole lot closer, but it's not getting further apart, I'll tell you that much. And I think McGrew and Rosenberg is going to be the fight that comes to a head here momentarily. And there's the car that's pulling offline there. I think that's Richard Sawicki pulling out of the way. Nice, respectful driving there. We appreciate that. Thank you, Richard. And James Houghton, by the way, top five. We haven't really seen a lot from him in this race. He was really satisfied with how his car is driving. Give him the track position. He will be a contender by the end of this weekend. These two, though, they have so much respect for each other. Matan, 19 or will be 19 years old. Uh, Luke could be his dad, but uh, Incredible. He, they both do a lot of work on their own. Look at this run up out of turn number six. Here comes Luke to driver's left into turn number seven. On the outside, this is a hard line to hold on to. Luke's going to throttle up side by side for the podium spot here in race one. Luke, door to door with Rosenberg. Look at this battle That's side spicy. by side. That's spicy stuff right there. Can oh, Matan re clear it. him? This is going to get dicey here. Cerise, it gets real tight at turn nine. Now into 10, who's later on the brakes? Rosenberg does not have the binders like Luke does, really deep into the corner. He slips across the nose, Luke tucks underneath them, tries to get back, they oh. touch, and side by side leaving 10B up the back straight away here. For third place, McGrew and Rosenberg, but now the 44 just throttles up, he's gone. Radio back to Houston, that car's a rocket ship. This looks like a Cain and Abel situation. They look like brothers out here, just like really fighting at it, so. Unbelievable, into turn number 11 now. Rosenberg clings to it. Coming back across the stripe, are we expecting a white flag? We should get it any moment here. I still, oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. White flag, one more lap to go. Curly's got the advantage over Swenson, but the battle is for third. It is really, really dicey here for P3. McGrew uh, and Houghton waiting in the wings here to pounce on the 484. Yep, they're waiting for that sprint to the finish line. Here we go, and now they know. They know the pressure's on. They're ready to go. So we're gonna see some aggressive driving here on this last lap. Yeah, defense there for Rosenberg. He's struggling a little bit to get that car slowed down. We saw it at turn 11. We saw it at turn 10B when he slid across the nose of Luke. And Luke tried to get the power down to him, but he just couldn't get back there in time. And the battle for the lead's getting close, Cerise. We're not done yet. I was going to say, and I, know, I know we said all that stuff about the Corvettes, but, you know, they're really out here serving today. They are doing a great job, and Swenson is trying to reel in Paul Curley. That 45 is such a well-built car, such a well-driven car. Yes. And into turn seven now. Rosenberg and McGrew is going to be the battle to watch, but the two leaders are close enough that this could get spicy before it's not. Two corners left, so race 10B and 11. This is, it. this is the time, this is the moment, guys. Leaders on their way down to 10B, but Rosenberg on the binders. McGrew closes in, but not enough. You're gonna have more braking zones in this section of the track, too, so this is when they have those opportunities that Kyle was talking about before. Throttling up, now heading up the back straightaway for the final corner. Paul Curley in the number 45 out of Ohio has had a great season so far. 10 starts and a win to his name. But race number one at Gridlife Midwest Festival in the 10th year is going to go to Paul Curley. His second win on the season. The 45 wins at Gingerman Raceway. Across the line is Jeremy Swenson in second place. Matan Rosenberg in third. Then it's Luke McGrew, James Houghton in fourth and fifth. And look at this battle all the way back to the strike. <gasps> Houghton and Walbump very close for P5. That was awesome stuff as the rest of the field comes back to the stripe here. Gary Wimble. <laughs> Austin Hurdle, seventh and eighth. Then it's Andrew Raines and Eric Meadows, a top 10 in only his second weekend. Let's have a look at the results here for Gridlife Midwest Festival race number one. Paul Curley gets it done ahead of Jeremy Swenson by just about a half a second. Then Matan Rosenberg clings to the back of Jeremy, or to the front of Luke McGrew, I should say, but Luke right on top of him there at the end. And Houghton had faded almost into the clutches of Walbaum as we look down the list. Tony Marchev, a top 15, and Eric Cattill fading down. And Lena Chin up into the top 20. Great race for Lena and for Zach Lavoie, up to 16th in the number 42. Ryan Upham back in the top 20, and same for Hans Horpital in the Myriad Motorsports number 77. That was a great run for them. Carlos Mendez up a handful of positions into 25th place. Louis Chatroop, 26th. West Case, Jake Jornstadt, Alex Moss, and Adam Wood rounding out your top 30. Ryan Power in his first race in the ND Miata, 21st place. Not a bad run, all things considered. And then Fiona Liu in her first race back since her crash at Watkins Glen, 33rd in the 333. And then down the list of drivers that probably would have hoped for a little better. Jason Saney in the 73. Uh, dropping off of our list, so he did not make it back around, unfortunately. Maybe a mechanical issue there. And Eric Jensen had dropped out of the top 10 at some point. What a shame for the 184. We didn't see him come off track, but Eric Jensen was in the top 10 
and did not make it back to the stripe to finish out the race. That is heartbreak for Eric. We were talking about how his season had really not gone to plan uh, with some broken differentials and things and ABS not quite functioning properly. So we will have to get an update on the 184. But now down into pit lane, they will come and woe things down. This is their only race today, so they're going to have to get ready to go racing again tomorrow. And it is a busy day with three races and the top 10 shootout uh, for uh, Grid Life Touring Cup. So they're going to come on down pit lane here in just a moment. And we're going to talk to Paul Curley and Jeremy Swenson once Cerise flags them down as uh, they head on down pit lane. Again, Swenson, not enough for Paul Curley. Was very, very close, but did not quite get there as they roll on into pit road. So race one of Grid Life Touring Cup is complete. We're just waiting for post-race interviews here. And in just a couple minutes, we'll be getting ready for the NOS Energy Track Battle Championship qualifying. One will be joined by Adam Nielsen in just a few moments uh, after uh, we finish things up here with GLTC. And we'll, our first session is going to be the uh, Falcon Sunday Cup competitors. They'll be out first. And here comes Paul Curley, who rolls in for a stop next to Cerise. And Jeremy Swenson in behind. The G-Speed Corvettes getting ready to roll. And here we go. Cerise is down on pit lane with a race one winner. All right, three, two, Cerise. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> uh, I am here with Paul Curley. Really, that was an insane battle. We had a lot of fun watching you. Oh, Now Cerise is going to jump on back to Jeremy Swenson, who is our second place runner here. Uh, busy paddock area, obviously, but uh, Cerise getting set up here to talk to our second place driver, points leader, Jeremy Swenson. <laughs> We're having some audio issues down there. It is a loud place, and we'll get that sorted here for the races tomorrow. But I'm joined now by Adam Nielsen. We're going to wrap up GLTC here in just a moment, Adam. I know you're, you're joining us uh, for track battle. But uh, race number one for GLTC, an unbelievable drive there by Paul Curley. Did not put a tire wrong. He's your race one winner. It was Jeremy Swenson in second place, and then an epic battle between the 44 of Matan Rosenberg and the number seven of Luke McGrew. We're going to wrap things up for Grid Life Touring Cup. And we'll talk to the partners and people that made it all happen. We'll see you for the NOS Energy Track Battle Championship here in a couple of minutes. Born on the track, bred on the mountains, raised on the podium, ready for anything and everything. Learn more about our entire line at falcontire.com.
come to pit road. All four of you stay in the car. I'm Chris Forsberg, and I want to tell you about Valvoline's Flexfill Gear Oil, which is designed by car people for car people. It comes in a pouch, which is specifically made to work in tight spaces, and it saves me time versus the old pumping method so I can focus on things like keeping my drivetrain running clean. Unlike the pump, the Flexfill pouch leaves no wasted oil and no wasted time. Plus, it keeps my garage nice and clean from any spills. All you gotta do is put the nozzle where you need some oil, give it a squeeze, and you're ready for the road. That's why I protect everything in my garage with Valvoline. Valvoline, trusted for over 150 years.